This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com and GatheringMagic.com, your place to explore the game. Hey, I'm David, and this is my Jalira the Master Polymorphous deck. Okay, this is Jalira. So uh, she has the ability to pay three, tap her, sacrifice another creature, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary creature, and then you put it onto the battlefield. And then you put the rest on the bottom in random order. This deck has a theme of changing things into other things. Uh, you know, it's all based around the polymorph ability. So. Besides that, she's 4 for a 2-2, two, two. so she doesn't really attack, it's all just spells and changing things around. So this deck is supposed to be fun and pretty budget, so it has 34 islands, that's really just the mana base. And then there's a... Uh, Soaring Sea Cliff, when it comes into play to give a creature flying. There's a lot of cards in here that care about creatures with the flying, so it just helps every now and then. And then Reliquary Tower, just to have no maximum hand size. Uh, it's pretty much good in any deck, so just fit in here too. So to uh, change things into other things. First we have uh, Diminish. Let's just turn any creature into a 1-1. One, one. Instant spell, just some combat tricks. Pongify destroys a creature and then turns it into a 3-3 three, three token. Curse of the Swine is exile any creatures. It's uh, one of the few blue exile spells that really would work in this. So, And it turns them into a 2-2 two, two green boar token. So, and you can do X to do any amount of creatures. Uh, Avanize, this is just one of my favorite cards just because of the art. So, just turning a creature into a 0-1 sheep, you know. It doesn't actually become the sheep, but I just like the idea of it. Uh, Hour of Need, this is another exile of the creatures, and then it turns them into a 4-4 four, four Sphinx token. Uh, you can do Strive and hit any number of creatures, so it gets pretty pricey, so it doesn't really do too many of them, but really late game, it could be a game changer. Uh, Polymorphous Jest, and until the end of turn, all each creature target player controls lose all abilities and become a blue frog and they're all 1-1 one, one frogs so this has the flavor text from Jalira it's Jalira's card it really had to be in the deck but it just fit into the theme anyway so but infinite reflection uh, this is an chance of creature and then each other creature I control becomes a copy of that creature and then any creatures that come into play become a copy of that creature so it's just another way to turn my entire board into the same creature and just change things around then we have actually polymorph and a couple more polymorph abilities uh, this one's just basic polymorph is destroy target creature and it can't be regenerated and then you reveal cards from the top of the library until you find another creature and that goes into play uh, unlike Jalira this one can hit legendaries but I don't have too many in the deck just because of Jalira mass polymorph is uh, polymorph ability for the whole for all of my creatures uh, it does all of them at the same time and then they all Polymorph together. Uh, Polymorphous Rush 
is it uh, choose a creature on the battlefield any number of target creatures you control can become a copy of that creature so it's a lot like infinite reflections but this one's just an instant spell and then it's just till the end of turn and then again it has the strive so it'll get kind of expensive but it had the word polymorph in it so I had to put it in the deck Blessed Reincarnation. This is uh, another polymorph ability, but it only works on your opponent's creatures. And then it has the rebound ability, just so you can do it twice. Synthetic Destiny. This is from the pre-cons. Uh, exile all creatures you control, and then essentially you polymorph them, but it happens at the beginning of the next end step. So it's just another... Mass polymorph type card. And then we've got some bounce spells here. So, Wash Out is uh, just pick a color and all permanents of that color go back to their owner's hands. Aether Spouts to help protect myself and make the attacking creatures go either on top or bottom of the library. Psychonic Rift, uh, one of the best bounce spells out there. I'm sure you all know what it does. Overload just to bounce everything you don't control that's non-land. So, just blow out everybody in a big game. And then, uh, Whelming Wave is a return all creatures except for Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. Uh, there's a minor theme in here of those four creature types just because giant fish are kind of fun to polymorph into. Guy Snatch, this is the only counter spell in the, the deck. Uh, I wanted it to be a fun mono blue deck and not super controlling. So uh, this one made the cut just because when you counter the spell you get a 1-1 one, one spirit token. So it fit where you change a spell into a token and then you can use the tokens and polymorph those two into actual real creatures so I just figured one counter spell is kinda necessary every now and then so this one made the cat. Uh, cackling counterpart like I said there's a minor token theme in here too and uh, so this one just makes a token and then you can flash it back and make another token Uh, stolen identity is make another token or another token copy of a creature and then it has cipher so you can keep doing it if you're attacking and it deals damage yeah. fool's demise this is a uh, in case I want to keep polymorphing the same creature I can uh, when an enchanted creature is put into the graveyard, return that creature to play. And then when Fool's Demise goes to the graveyard from play, return Fool's Demise to my hand. So I can just put this on a creature and then polymorph it. And then the creature comes right back and I get the enchantment back, Fool's Demise. And then I can just keep doing that. So I can just get a bunch of profit from the same creature. Uh, Illusion Illusionist's Gambit. This is a, just a combat trick to remove creatures that are attacking me and I can... Uh, you return all attacking creatures, remove all attacking creatures from combat and untap them. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Each of those creatures attacks the combat if able, but they can't attack me or a planeswalker I control. So it's just a way to protect myself and it was illusions and trickery so I just kind of felt like it fit clone legion for each creature target player controls put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature so it just it fits the token theme and it makes a whole bunch of copies a mirror mockery this is a 
enchantment for when the creature attacks you can put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature and then exile that token at the end of combat this is mostly meant to put onto an opponent's creature for me just to if they has a good end of the battlefield effect I want to copy or something or if I want to try and stop somebody from attacking with a creature just because I would get one too so and then mirror match this is for each creature attacking you or a planeswalker you control but a token on a that's a copy of it onto the battlefield blocking that creature and then exile them at the end of combat so it's just another combat trick and it involves tokens so with these you know mirror match and mirror mockery I have five Jaleer untapped I can polymorph those tokens before they disappear too gather specimens uh, just kinda I picture Jaleer as a scientist and experimenting and doing all this stuff so I just thought this was fitting you know if a creature would come into play under an opponent's control this turn then it comes into play under mine so this is also the beginning of a few cards that steal creatures that way if I steal the opponent's creature then I can polymorph those two and I get a creature out of it and there's just disappears Uh, blatant thievery just blatantly steal a creature from each person I could take other permanents but it'll usually be creatures so I can polymorph them and ray of command it's a instant just to steal a creature just the same thing I can take it and polymorph it before I lose control of it gravitational shift uh, this is the minor flying theme I was talking about and it fits with that so creatures that are flying get a boost in power creatures without flying get a negation in power uh, just a few cards to draw cards uh, mass the components this is one of the ones where uh, you draw three cards and then you put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library this is in case I have a creature that I want to polymorph into and I can't hard cast it or something then I'll just stick it back in my deck and try and get it later and then 4C to scry 4 and then draw 2 cards this will also help set up a polymorph ideally you know if I got something that is a couple cards down then I can at least know what I'm polymorphing into so it's not all random Flow of Ideas is my favorite draw card for a mono blue deck. Draw a card for each island you control. So it costs six to cast and I usually have all islands. So it'll at least draw six cards. And late game it just draws me more. Uh, reminisce is target player shuffles his or her library and or graveyard into the library. Um, this is just just in case if I'm running out of creatures that I need to start over or if somebody else has graveyard shenanigans that I need to take care of relic uh, progenitis this is just my graveyard control you know taps to remove a card or pay one to completely remove all the graveyards and draw a card Swift Fit Boots, just to give Jaleer a hexproof. Um, haste helps too if I have enough mana to actually cast her and use her ability on the same turn if it's later game. This is one of the few spells that just makes tokens. So, Talran's Invocation, it just makes two, two, two flying Drake tokens. That way I can make the tokens and polymorph them. Nuisance Engine, it's an artifact that makes tokens, so pay two, tap it, and put a zero one pest into play. So I just use this just for more tokens to polymorph. Burnished Heart is one of my really few mana fixing cards. You know, it's all basic lands, so I don't have to worry about color or anything, but uh, this is my really only ramp card, I believe. So it's uh you know pay three search your library for two basic land and put them into play.
So uh, this is one of the few creatures that I will actually not polymorph because I almost always want to use the ability instead. Mirror Sire. Uh, when it goes into the graveyard it makes a 1-1 one -one colorless mirror artifact token. So it's just a body I can polymorph and then it replaces itself so I can polymorph it again. Archaeomancer uh, returns an instant or sorcery from my graveyard to my hand. It's just meant to help me get back the spells I have and polymorph more stuff, usually. Archetype of Imagination. This is a part of the flying theme I was talking about. You know, if all my creatures have flying and then none of my opponent's creatures can have flying. So if I have this and gravitational shift out, then all of my creatures get a boost and all of their creatures get a negation. So just seem pretty good. Uh, Paragon of Gathering Mists. This deck has a lot of creatures that want to attack just because it's all polymorph based and all that. So just an anthem effect to give everything 1-1. And then, if need be, I can give a target creature flying until the end of turn. Mold Drifter, Flyer, draws cards. That's really all it's there for. So if it comes into play, then it'll work out pretty well. Uh, Sigil Starfish, uh, Taps and Scries. So, just one of my uh, more favorite cards. And then the ability to scry will help me set up polymorphs. And it's a starfish, so just kind of help the minor sea creature theme. Got a couple clones here to polymorph into. Uh, first got Clever Impersonator. And that comes into play, I can do any permanent. Quicksilver Gargantuan, just a normal clone, and then it, except it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. So again, this one's really expensive, so it's a lot more fun to polymorph into. Uh, Mercurial Pretender, it's another clone for anything I have, and then it has the bounce effect to return it to my hand. So just in case I want to change what it is, or anything like that. And here's just the basic clone that comes into play, make a copy. Frost Titan, uh, really good enter the play uh, ability. And when it comes into play, or attacks, tap, target permanent, and that doesn't untap. When it's controller's next untap step. It's, and then he protects himself, but that really it doesn't come up too often. But uh, just one of the big creatures that's fun to polymorph into. Storm Surge Kraken, one of the first Krakens. This is a, has the Lieutenant ability. So as long as I have Jalira out, then Storm Surge Kraken gets plus two, plus two, and has whenever it becomes blocked, I may draw two cards. So it becomes a 7-7 seven, seven Hexproof, and if I block it, I get to draw cards. And then it's a Kraken, so it's starting this theme. Uh, Reef Worm. It starts as just a 0 1, but every time it dies, it becomes bigger and bigger. So this is just another one of the creatures that it replaces itself when I want to polymorph it. So it becomes a 0 1 worm, and then a 3 3 fish. And then it becomes a 6-6 six, six Whale, and then a 9-9 nine, nine Kraken. So just all the creature types seem to fit, and the idea of replacing itself just really helped the deck. Deep Sea Kraken. It's a 6-6 six, six Unblockable Kraken. I, if I ever draw it, then I'll usually suspend it, just as an alternate cost. Otherwise, it, it's just a overpriced creature that's a lot more fun to polymorph into. Chasm Skulker, whenever you draw a card it gets a 1-1 counter. 
and then whenever it dies you get x11 squids for each counter so it's just one of those cards that replaces itself with more tokens and it's a squid Colossal Whale. It's a 5 5 island walk. Whenever a Colossal Whale attacks, you may exile target creature defending player controls until a Colossal Whale leaves the battlefield. So, it, just once again, it's a really big whale and it's really expensive. So, just trying to polymorph into it. Stormtide Leviathan, the king of all the fish creatures, is. All islands or all lands become islands in addition to their other types, and all creatures without flying or island walk can attack. So that's another thing. If I have all my creatures with flying and none of theirs with flying, then they uh, I can attack and they can't. And then there's just a couple other fish with island walk, so it just worked out. Shipbreaker Kraken. Uh, says the monstrosity ability when it becomes monstrous tap up to four target creatures those creatures don't untap during their controllers on tap steps this is just a another fish it's really just the 6-6 six -six kraken I don't think I've actually ever used the monstrous ability but I'm sure if I ever do it'll be at the perfect time Scrouge of the Fleets, uh, when it enters the battlefield, you return each creature and opponent controls with toughness X or less, where X is the number of islands you control. So this is really good in a mono blue deck, especially since I have so many islands. It's a Kraken to fit the theme, and it was a bounce spell to bounce my opponent's creatures. So, this is another perfect creature. Uh, getting into a bunch of the flyers now. So there's a, the Sphinx of a Magosi, just a 6-6 six, six flyer. And there's the ability to pay 3, draw a card. So it's just another one of my favorite Sphinxes. And it's another expensive card that's a lot better when you get it for a polymorph cost. Dungeon Geists. It's a, when it enters the battlefield, tap a creature down and it doesn't untap as long as Dungeon Geist is in play. So it's just another... This one's a smaller flyer, but it's a little more controlling. Gen of Wishes uh, comes into play with three wish counters. Pay four to remove a wish counter, and you can play the top card of your library without paying for it. And if you don't, then exile it. Um, with all the scry abilities and that kind of stuff, I'll hopefully know what's on top of the library. So, it's just the idea of this is just a get more big stuff for cheaper just kind of fit the theme Sphinx of Athun, the Factor Fiction Sphinx so when it comes into play reveal the top five cards of your library and opponent separates them into two piles and then you put one pile in your hand and the other in the graveyard uh, just another really big expensive Sphinx and this one lets me draw some cards Royal Elemental uh, when a land comes into play, then you can gain control of a target creature and opponent controls. So this is another, it steals creatures from my opponents and lets me polymorph them, and then it's a flyer. So. Wind Reader Sphinx. Uh, whenever a creature with flying attacks, I draw a card. I got enough creatures in here with flying that it helps me just draw a few cards every now and then. And... This is a really attack heavy mono blue deck, so I like to attack with everything I can. So this one just helps me keep going and get some gas. And then again, you can see the mana cost and all of these cards is really high, so it's just trying to get them all in for cheaper. And then finally, the Sphinx of Dwar Isle. It's a flying shroud, and I can look at the top card of my library. So this is just in here to see if uh, if I want to polymorph into something or if it's just something I don't want at the time then I can wait. So just being able to look at the top cards pretty nice. And then 5-5 five, five, Flying Shroud, it's not a bad creature at all. Thanks for watching CMDR Decks. Please subscribe and favorite.